Okay, this is the canoe building process. Step one. First we do the math for the canoe to create a good plan as an example. Some of us measure the amount of wood we need and then cut the wood. Step two. Then we made the gunnel, which is two long planks bent together to make the, shop, the top shape of the canoe. Step three. Then Xander, an awesome canoe building expert, built the keel board. The keel board is three small boards glued together and then bent into a C-like shape. Each end of the keel is connected to each end of the gunnel. Then the bottom of the ribs are nailed to the keel. Now we have the frame of the canoe. Step four. We soak the rib planks in water so that we can bend them into the shape of the ribs. Then we use the other canoe, Burning Wisdom, to bend the, our ribs over that canoe so that we get the exact shape of the ribs. Step five, next we built the planks. The planks is like skin on a human but on a canoe. It has many long flat pieces of wood covering the ribs so that water cannot get in while we are in the river. Step six, next we put epoxy on the outside of the canoe. Epoxy is a type of paint that people put on canoes so that water doesn't get in when we paddle the canoe. Step seven, then we did the painting. The painting took many colorful, creative drafts to find out the correct idea. Step eight, we oiled the canoe so that it'd be waterproof. It's one thing to just build a canoe, you know, you could just build canoes and sell them. Um, but having, having the kids there, I think it's very empowering for them to be creating this object that what did, didn't exist before and they've, they've brought this beautiful object into existence. Um, you know, you're, you're imbuing an object with life and I think that's, I mean, that's kind of a weird thought, but I think that's giving life to something like that is, is pretty empowering for the kids and just the physical act of making their paddles, um, <clears throat> which really turned out beautifully, uh, I think is also, I mean, they, took, they took, a, took off every scrap of wood on those things and themselves, and they were able to, to make them into the beautiful objects that are there just by persevering and, you know, being shown that just by sticking at something, they would, they would be able to finish it. The fourth grade crew at Palouse Prairie Charter School spent a semester studying the canoe-supported expeditions of Lewis and Clark and David Thompson and carefully examined how the exploration of the West in the early 1800s led to the expansion of the U.S. territory and colonization of indigenous peoples. We analyzed stories of the U.S. Cavalry's pursuit of the Nez Perce, the Navajo Long Walk, and the Cherokee Trail of Tears to understand how the indigenous peoples who have inhabited our region's lands for centuries were impacted by our country's development. Students then studied the arts of written and oral storytelling and heard stories directly from Nez Perce, Coeur d'Alene, Shoshone Bannock, Oglala Lakota, Kalispell, Colville, and San Carlos Apache peoples. Each student then collected evidence from the text they read and engaged in a rich history talk to discuss their responses to the intentionally provocative question, was westward expansion good for people? You know, when I was in the fourth grade back in the 70s, we, didn't, we never did anything like this. So to me, I suspect the most important thing for these kids we're going to have to wait 10, 15 years to find out because I think that big memories have been created in terms of bonding with friends, in terms of bonding with teachers, in terms of bonding with mentors and craftsmen, in terms of bonding with, you know, cultural liaisons from other communities. Um, and I think that the the ramifications of that, we, we don't really know what's going to happen yet. You know, the, the seeds were, were planted today, so I think that's probably the most important part of the whole project. The most important thing that the children are learning is that there's no boundaries on the skin color. It doesn't matter what your skin color is, we're all here together. We all learn together. We all have to learn together and be a giant family. And they learned that 
they learned how important family is. No matter if it's a pack or what, it's together. It's a village that raises that child. They all, they all learned a lot here, it looked like. I mean, during their making their canoe. To, uh, just a lot about the land, the way them kids talk, everything. They talked about how everything's connected, and that's really good, and it's something they'll be learning a lot more about, sounds like. And, and I'm glad they're learning it, because like they all know that we never got to do it for a long time, and it feels really good when you're out there. And I'm glad they get to feel that feeling. I guess in simple terms for the, the way I, I generally think about it is like it, it doesn't really take much for all of us just to get together to do something um, mom, you know, momentous or memorable for all of us and really significantly important to each individual. The most important thing that I've learned this expedition is that when you build a canoe, you bring culture and happiness back to the natives. As a celebration of learning, we piled our canoe onto the Snake River, together with traditional canoe families throughout the Pacific Northwest region. Patty and Lauren led us in a naming ceremony to welcome blooming culture into our new family. As a crew, we decided to name our canoe Blooming Culture because blooming means coming back. Flowers bloom in the spring, but they are always there as seeds. The tribes were never really gone, and now they're making a huge effort to make their cultures more visible to tribal and non-tribal peoples. Blooming Culture will help spread this message. I hope that in the future, Idaho will change a lot and will notice this, that some of the tribes get grow bigger and get their land back, and that it will help everybody in the world.